everyone. Welcome to She Devils United. We are back. Yeah. It is the dynamic duo on tonight. Myself and Nick. Nick, how are you, my love? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. A couple more days in work and then I'm off till the new year. Oh my God. You see, some of us got to keep going in our, um, the, the equivalent to the NHS. We have to book time off. We don't get it off. So I'll be working um, besides the usual days over Christmas. Guys, hope we're doing well. Man United versus Burnley. Manchester United finally back. Haven't played a game since the 13th of November. We played Fulham in that 2-1 win, Nick. Um, on the 13th of November, we haven't played since then. It is fifth in the Premier League against first in the championship. Burnley are smashing it under Vincent Company. Absolutely smashing it. They only played two days ago and they won 3-1 as well. I think it was away from home they won. Obviously, we haven't played since the 13th of November. Guys, we've got some members questions. We've got some topical um, questions as well that we're going to get into. And of course, I want everyone to get involved in the live chat. We're going to start, Nick, because during the World Cup, the news broke that there is going to be a potential sale of Manchester United investment uh, slash sale. I think we can all gather it's definitely going to be a sale. Um, now, Avram himself, Gremlin number two, has been out in Qatar. He's been mingling with um, a couple of the Middle Eastern um, state-owned groups that has come from, you know, Ornstein and a couple others, quite credible. There is the rain group, Nick, are heading it. They are an American something or other. They oversaw the sale of Chelsea. For you and getting the light chat too, who is your ideal new owner of Manchester United? Well, it'd have to be um, Sir Jim Radcliffe's group, really. If it, thinking about, I, I didn't realise they were big sports um, investors. So I think that for me, tops it really because they they kind of know sport they know how it works not necessarily football but i think that that will probably be our best bet what i don't want is saudis dubai all that lot because to them it's it's just it's a toy you know and the same with city it's a toy and what happens when our government decide not to do business with the saudis or dubai or wherever else because of human rights or whatever else it is in the same way they did with Chelsea with Abramovich, he's had to go. When when does that kick in and when does it happen to be a problem? And it's only a problem when it's a problem. So I'd rather have somebody that's going to make an investment. Then the difficulty is that we as fans need to understand that whoever's going to spend five or six billion on us, I, I think I saw some reports about nine billion, which I was a bit surprised about because we're not worth that. Nine billion. But they're going to need to, they're going to want to take some kind of profit they want to make money the business people at the end of the day so we have to accept as fans that the business people and they're going to want to make money they want to take money out of it but actually i think they'll invest in it as well and i think that's what we want to see as fans is the investment i don't think we'd have had as much of a problem if the investment was there the stadium was brought up to scratch the training facilities were brought up to scratch i don't think we'd have had as much of a problem and actually the biggest thing for me is the debt on the club I understand nobody's got five or six billion. There'll be some leverage within that. But the entire United is is debt at the moment. And that's what I want to see gotten rid of and actually investment being put in. Take out your profits if you need to pay yourself or your dividends or whatever else it is. But actually, if you're investing more than you're taking out, that for me is just perfect. But whether we'll get that, that's a, <laughs> that's a different story. But in an ideal world... I don't want, you know, I wouldn't want somebody like Musk who would buy something and just use it as a toy like he's done, like he's done with Twitter. Because, oh, no. Yeah, I mean, would, you just, you go around in circles then and that's, that's what's going to happen if it's somebody that is just throwing away, throwing them away. Let's just have a little bit of a fun. And actually, I think for the most part, people don't want to see it fail. They're not there for the failure. They might want to... You might want to invest for, I don't know, saying you own Man United. That's a big thing for people. But actually, they're gonna. You would you would hope they would want to make money. The Glazers have made money, even though we've not been successful for over ten years. They've still made money. So there's the potential there. Whoever invests is going to make money. But we want to see them actually invest in the club as well. 
it, it's a difficult one because sometimes the grass isn't always greener. Be careful what you wish for. You know, we've wanted these pagans out for 17 years. I'm a little bit apprehensive because you just don't know who you're going to get. Yeah. Um, I think whoever comes in, they've got to invest. So no matter who it is, we need either a new stadium or a redevelopment of Old Trafford. The, Carrington needs a whole redevelopment and the, the team still needs to be redeveloped as well. We need like an, like lo still loads of players, a full squad of players still still needed there. Um, there's a lot of stuff within Manchester United, the structure in there. For me, there's a lot of men in there that need to go, that they're not up for the job. So there's a lot of shakeups need to happen behind the scenes as well. Sir Jim is the obvious one because, you know, we're led to believe he's a Man United fan. He's a British billionaire. He has the money. <clears throat> you know, he's got other sports. Um, you know, he's involved in a lot of other sports. Not really very successful at Nice at all. Um, I think he has a club in Switzerland as well. I'm not sure how they're doing. Let me know in the live chat if you know. A lot of shouts for Apple, like a tech company, Apple. Amazon, I'm not sure how, I think they're probably the lesser evil, so to speak, besides Sir Jim, because Claire makes a very good point. It's very, um, it's a little bit worrying for those of us who want Sir Jim. He's not opened his mm -hmm. mouth since the club has actually gone up for sale. It seems like he's gone into hiding. Yeah, but is that is that because he's a businessman? He's not here for the fanfare. He wants to invest to make money. He's not interested in all that other stuff. I don't know whether that's necessarily a bad thing. I get that we might be a little bit worried because he's not come out and said anything at all. But actually, I don't want somebody who's always in the limelight that's throwing themselves about. If a deal's done and it's signed, sealed and delivered and we're the last people to know about it, it's, it's a bit for me like when we sign a new player and it's not the big worldy star that everybody's touting for it's actually an unknown somebody who's relatively small but actually they can grow and build with us i've always said that i prefer that over the big names that come in so i think for me i don't think it's a negative that he's been he's been quiet because again you know he's he's a businessman he's not he's not singing and dancing i bet he doesn't i bet he didn't do that for any of his other thing other investments that that he's bought he's not he's not a musk who you know tweets for three million years before he buys twitter he gets the paperwork in order and he gets it signed so i don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing it's a good point he might be working on it behind the scenes and keeping it all hush hush it was very interesting how he was like they're lovely men and i met them and they're really nice but i mean about the glazers we were all horrified maybe there was stuff going on behind the scenes that we didn't know about because apparently they, the club they were looking for investment and potential new buyers since the summer and even before that i'm going to guess and say since the super league went belly up um it'll be interesting i i agree with vs who said i don't want american owners no disrespect to anyone but the ones we've seen in the premier league the ones we've had I would just rather not them, even a consortium made up of some of them, I would rather not. I think a lot of people say Apple, the thing with Apple is they strive for excellence, whether people are, are Samsung over Apple or whatever, they strive for excellence. They've got no experience in that. But do the Dubai Investment Group have experience in it? They've seen other state-owned um, investment funds by uh, football clubs but it's not necessarily mean they're going to do a good job I think they would invest I, I think the difference with boy money is I don't think they're going to take money out of the club we, we've seen that at Man City we've seen it at PSG we've seen it at Newcastle <clears throat> they're just putting money in because it's a top like it's a toy to them it's a it's a hobby it's sports washing you know it's a front for something which I mean some people don't mind I'm kind of leaning towards maybe I would take them but I mean at, when when you look at all of them who really has clean hands I've heard a lot about Sir Jim when he when he owned that chemical company that he was he was appalling the way he treated the workers um, mm. and some of them were going on strike some I, I think I don't know if they were minors correct me if I'm wrong this was years ago apologies if it was wrong but he he's the head of mm. Ineos and it was something to do with their company and he was a tyrant, apparently. Um, so most, most businessmen who are billionaires are in some shape or all form, of them. Aren't they? I think the thing about Saudi money or oil money is that 
they don't generally tend to go straight in at the, into the big guns. They like to almost, the toy is, they're buying something that's not quite the finished article yet and investing and building it and building it. They've done it with City, they're doing it with Newcastle now. So I, I, I don't even necessarily think that they're going to want, you know, I know there's been lots of talk about it, but I still don't think that they're, they're front runners for it. It's very out of character for, for their model already. Yeah, I, I, that's a very good point because all of the, the oil men, we say, are state owned oil that are funded by oil. PSG were nobodies when they bought them ch cheap. City, nobodies, relegation fodder cheap. Newcastle, no disrespect, nobodies, relegation fodder. Um, who, who else am I forgetting? So they buy for cheap and then they, you know, yeah. they invest the billions. Now, Man United, Nick, the thing is, we're already a huge club. We, we generate hundreds of millions, but we need billions of investment. That it's So technically, I suppose it's the same thing, but they'll have already spent billions to, to, to get the club. Um, I'm going to lean towards, hopefully, there's an unknown who is the ideal person um, or an apple for me. But I look... What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Man City, look at the success they've had and how good they have been. I'll take a bit of that. I'll <laughs> take a bit of that and we'll become the fucking noisy neighbours. You know, do you know what would be brilliant? If, is it Saudi Arabia or Newcastle? If they sold Newcastle to like Dubai and then Saudi Arabia bought us because I think they're the richest um in the world. I love a bit of that. Or the Glazers can buy Newcastle and the Newcastle owners can buy us. That would be hilarious to see the Newcastle fans um <clears throat> get a bit humbled because they're getting a bit too big for their boots. But guys, it remain to be seen hopefully by um March we'll have new owners and we pray that they're the right ones. Um, and they're competent for me because a lot of work has to be done behind the scenes once they come in. Um, we're going to move on. The World Cup is over. Now, Mushroom Kev had asked in the members only section, your World Cup team of the thing. No, the World Cup is over, it's Man United. But just an off a segue from that um, question. Man United had like about 15 players at the World Cup, Nick. We had three with Brazil two and a half and then became two with Portugal you know we had three with England we, you know Ericsson was there a couple of the others were there for you who was Man United's best player at the World Cup this was really really difficult because I, I was trying to work out who went out in what stages and and did they play enough to be able for me to see what they were like I think there were quite a few players stood out I think Fernandez stood out um I think that oh, what was the other player? Luke Shaw. I thought he thought I thought he did okay. And um, and actually, I'm going to say that from where Maguire started, he didn't do too badly with with England. But I think for me, the standout player was Dallow. I think we've seen quite a bit of how he's improved with United, and I think we've seen that within within the the squad at the World Cup as well. I know he didn't play an awful lot necessarily, but I don't think there were any players particularly that played an awful lot because of where where we went out and you know stuff like that but yeah I think Dallow for me I'm really liking him as a player I think that he's come on leaps and bounds and I was really pleased that he got he got a good run in the World Cup so for me I mean obviously you'd, you'd go for somebody in the Argentinian side that that won the World Cup, but again, he I didn't play in every game. He no, he didn't. So I I didn't go for him I, when he did play. I liked him. I also liked Anthony when he played. I didn't like seeing him cry on the pitch when when they lost and went out necessarily. But they all, I think they all had. I think they all had. I mean, again, a good shout for Rashford really for you know the goals that he scored. But again, he didn't play. He didn't play enough. Yes, he was. He was instrumental when he came on, but I don't think anybody necessarily had a, a standout World Cup, really. I think there was one. No, yeah, he did bench Cancelo Dallo, but he didn't play in all the games. Nick makes a good point. Varan didn't play in all the games. Um, Ericsson he's got not in Varan. I think he. It looks like he was more exhausted. That to me was what like he was just. 
God, I was, he, I was cursing yesterday watching. I was like, oh, that's I nearly, yeah, I, 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 I was the same. I kind of like, <gasps> my heart stopped. But actually, I think he had been ill. He had that virus. He didn't train the day before and it went all the way. I, it was madness to keep him on all that length of time. Yeah. Um, I, I, When Varane did play, I thought he was really, really good. Shouts for Casemiro, who I thought was absolutely brilliant as well. Right up there with... um with, uh brazil's best players in the tournament brilliant brilliant performances they did get knocked out early however for me there's a standout player and it was bruno fernandez it was bruno every single game besides the last one where none of the players played well against morocco none of them and i think it was tactical from the manager bruno he had two goals and three assists in four games five goal contributions in four games he put some of their bigger players to shame AKA Cristiano Ronaldo who flopped. Um, yeah. I was gonna say him as a joke, but we're we're done with that. We're done with that mug. But um and I bet he's he was crying last night when Messi was robed up. You know, that that was enough for me. The karma was karma um at that stage. But like there is, there are shouts for Rashford. Maguire had a decent World Cup. Luke Shaw. Majority of our players had a good yeah. tournament. Um, but the standout for me was definitely Bruno Fernandez. He had he had there was games he was stunning in, absolutely stunning. Should have had more assists. Should have had more goals in, in some of those games too. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, but it was nice to see the players actually do well. Like Anthony didn't play that much, but when he did come on, he was decent. But uh, you know, Casemiro, some of our lads really, really did well. So it was nice to see. Now, there's rumors going around. There are lots of rumors, serious rumors going around from Pledy Goal from Sky, who's very credible, one of the few on Sky who is credible, Florian Plettenberg. And he has said Ten Hag and Manchester United are willing to let David De Gea go at the end of the season for free. Now, Manchester United had the option of extending his year, extending, like giving him a year. Um, so if we were going to sell him, we could get money for him. But apparently they're not, they don't want to activate the option and they're going to let him go in the summer. I want you guys to get as well, get in the live chat, tell me your thoughts. Nick, what's your thoughts on Man United letting David De Gea go for free in the summer? I think they'd be bloody crazy. I mean, I'm, I've never... I've never been a massive fan of him, but there's absolutely no doubt that this season he's been phenomenal for us. He's really stepped up. He seems to enjoy the Ten Hag way. He seems to have really... He's doing what Ten Hag wants him to do. So I think it'd be crazy to to get rid of him in the summer. And actually, who, who would you get to replace him? You'd need really somebody in now being trained, being coached, being moulded to take over, but not in the summer, maybe for the year after. How old is he, 33? He's not. I mean, as far as goalkeepers go, he's not super old, is he? He's got another couple of years in him. And actually, if he's playing the system that Ten Hag wants, why would you jeopardise that? Well, let's face it, we've got so many more problems than, than goalkeeper that we need to solve. We need to keep the players that are performing for us. So I think we'd be absolutely crazy to let him go. And to let him go on a free would be absolutely outrageous, considering the season that he's, he's been having as well. Why would you? I, I don't understand that mentality at all. You, you keep your best players. That's what you do. And he's he's totally stepped up to the mark. He's come out more with the sweeper keeper that I love. He's, you know, he's done everything that I wanted him to do. Maybe that's not what Ten Hag wanted him to do, but it's doubtful because he's been playing really really well so no i wouldn't i wouldn't let him go on a free if we go for that cunt <laughs> oh my god i people loved his antics in the world cup i fucking hated it i'm all for shit housing and passion and all of that some of his behavior was fucking disgusting i don't mean after the tournament when he's doing the thing you know don't get with the trophy i didn't that none of that but I mean, some of his comments, some of his post-match, some of his behaviour was appalling. And I don't think he's better than David De Gea. Emi Emiliana uh, Martinez is not better a go better goalkeeper than David De Gea. He just simply isn't. Um, really isn't a better goalkeeper. And the thing for me is, I would be shocked if we a let David De Gea go 
and B, let him go on a free. A free. You could you could activate the contract and get 20 million for him. David De Gea, for me, has been one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League this season. You take Alisson out of the equation because, I mean, he's probably the best goalkeeper in football right now. Ederson doesn't get tested enough for me to, to say whether he's better than David De Gea. There's nobody else in the Premier League that better than him on current form. Not Martinez, not mm. Sanchez, not none of them. Mm. And I agree, David De Gea has stepped up this season. And I said, mm. and Claire makes a good point. I think it might come down to that. However, mm. even Romano has said De Gea is willing to take a pay cut. Yeah. So, I no, Claire also did say, she doesn't believe it. Florian Kleckberg doesn't get everything right, but, he, you know, he has inside sources. He is credible. Um, I would be fuming. I would be absolutely fuming. And I think if he's willing to take a pay cut, even if Ten Hag thinks he, he you know, he doesn't suit the system and he wants somebody else. and But why would you not keep David De Gea as your second goalkeeper or to fight it out with your first mm. one? Nick, you remember, because I remember, Peter Schmeichel left Man United and we struggled for about 10 years to replace him. We went through fucking dud after dud. We went through world-class goalkeepers who came to Man United, bottled it and failed because they couldn't handle the pressure. And you're going to bring in somebody and you don't know if they're going to be good enough to be and, and mentally strong enough to be Man United number one and you're and not going to keep that you have to think of though don't you you have to think that we're talking about De Gea's wages but quite frankly the the goalkeeper is the last line of defense you want your goalkeeper to be stand out and if we're going to get another goalkeeper in that is better than De Gea they're going to demand those wages we've got Martinez now he's going to demand massive Massive wages, the, the tournament that he's just had, the penalty saves that he made, the shit housing that he's done, that's that's all a sales pitch. That's gonna so even if we got him, he's gonna be on ridiculous wages as well. And so he's it, probably gonna cost a lot of money. Why yeah. are we waste of money? Exactly. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. I don't I don't believe any rumors like that, and I, I don't believe that we'd get rid of him. I, I think you'd have to be absolutely insane. And Ten Hag doesn't strike me as absolutely insane. No, I, I, yeah, I think we should wait. However, Victoria Secrets asks if we don't, if we let David De Gea go, who's your choice for number one, Nick? I, I'm not going to lay. I struggled with this because the best goalkeepers are actors that we're not going to get. And then I was looking at other options, and I didn't think they genuinely. I didn't think they were better than David De Gea. Who's your choice? Get in the live chat too. And I'm going to say, Costa, he can fuck off. He FIFA fuckers can fuck off. I watched him in that World Cup. He was abysmal for Portugal. Yeah. Abysmal. He can pass out from the back. He couldn't come for a fucking cross. He was like Dracula, afraid of fucking crosses. He looked shaky, shaky, shaky. Fuck right off. This is why you need to be watching them week in, week out. Um, so, Nick, who's your choice? If David De Gea goes, who would you like to see come in? Again, I struggled with this because, the, again, it, I've said it so many times before, if I know a player, I don't necessarily want that player. If I know enough about them to know that they're absolutely fantastic and brilliant, one, they're going to cost us a shitload of money, not just in, in fees, but actually in wages. I want our scouts and our coaches and all those people behind the scenes going out and finding that I want them to bring in somebody that is not necessarily an unknown, but somebody that's coming up through the ranks that they can see the potential in, that they can mould. I don't necessarily want somebody like Loris or Edison or anybody like that. I want somebody who the, the scouts... I mean, get dips on it. She's absolutely fantastic. She can but that's from FIFA. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, FIFA should be our scouts, quite frankly, because if I know enough about them to know that they're brilliant and we want them at, at United, then it's probably going to be the wrong person because I would pick, I'd pick the wrong person. So I haven't got an answer to that other than I think it needs to be somebody that fits the system, not necessarily a big player, you know, and we'll come on to that with, with other stuff as well. Just somebody that fits the system that can be used and molded 
I'm not going to say Dean Henderson because Mary Mary might flip a lid. Um, but somebody if we're going to let David De Gea go and keep Dean Henderson, I I I I'm done with football. I mean, you can pick anybody, can't you? But he needs to be somebody that's going to fit that system and he's going to work just as good as De Gea has done to cement his place within the team. Because for me, there is nobody else at this moment in time that can keep up the pressure that De Gea has done. So. Take your pick, pick somebody out of a hat because they'll probably be shit for us. You know, like you say, we've had loads. Of, <laughs> we've picked loads of goalkeepers that have been shit since since Schmeichel. So Roy Carroll, Ben Foster, uh, Ho Tim Howard. We had um, Jesus Christ, Andy Gorham. Was he after? Was he after uh, Fabian <laughs> Bartes, World Cup winner? Oh my God, was supposed to be unbelievable. Fuck me, that game at Highbury against Arsenal. Never again did I want to see him in a Man United shirt. Um, <laughs> but he's another, one, he's another one of them Martinez players. Bosnich, another there. one. <laughs> Fuck right off. We went through about 15 goalkeepers and one was as bad as the other. Now, a lot of people are saying um, the Moroccan goalkeeper. Wow. I've seen him on the list. I've seen him on a list of good, good goalkeepers. He was Bono, but his name is... The pronunciation of his surname, Yassine Bono, okay, but it's it's not spelled B-O-N-O, -O, but it's, I mean, we've been calling him. Um, he plays with Sevilla and he has been on the list. Now he's 31. Is he better than well, David De Gea? <laughs> Why would you buy another ageing goalkeeper? Why are you not bringing somebody in who's young? Because we don't want a goalkeeper for two, three, four years. We want a goalkeeper that's going to come right through and stay with us. Because we're trying to build a system and build a team. You don't build a team with aging, you know, with aging players. Why do you think we've got Casemiro? You know, we've <laughs> he was gotten rid of because they're trying to build a squad with young players, not building it with old players because they're gonna go soon. Yeah, okay. and like the shouts for Donnarumma, is he gonna leave? Uh, to me, I I don't really I, I, I think he's a good goalkeeper. I think he's very overrated, Donnarumma. I do. That might sound, again, like controversial. I've never seen the big whoa with, with Donnarumma. I haven't. Again, Jamal says that he is a mercenary. I can imagine how much money he's on at PSG. Will he want to leave PSG and come to Man United? They're, they're constantly in the Champions League. We're not. I don't know. Now, you can fuck right off with Sanchez from Brighton, too, because I saw him come for crosses against Liverpool. He, he He's massively overrated him as well. Massively. Good on the ball, can fucking save and can collect a cross. I want a, a, a combination of all three. Now, uh, I don't want Sanchez and I, you can fuck off with Diogo Costa. Oh, <laughs> Costa, Costa, Costa. None of you had watched him. And then you've seen him in the World Cup and it's funny how no one now is saying Costa. But... He also has now a release clause of about 70 million. So we're going to get rid of David De Gea. And, boy, and don't tell me that kid from Leeds either, because he is fucking overrated and bang average. The only thing Messier does at Leeds is pick the fucking ball out of the back of the net. A wildly average, wildly good on the ball, can pass, pass, pass. Fuck off. I want a goalkeeper to save. And to so, sweep. You want a sweeper keeper as well, Mary. Yes. Um... Well, I do. A lot, a lot of people are saying like Liverkovic, Bono, but I, I don't want to take someone just from the World Cup. Bono is a show because he was on a lot of the lists that I saw for really good goalkeepers. The Eintracht Frankfurt fella, Kevin Trapp, we were linked to him. He is very highly rated, but he's 32. He's another one. But if he fits Ten Hag's system more than David De Gea, you could go for him because 32 is quite young. Goalies play until they're 40. He's not very expensive either. And the other one is Mike is it Man Mygin? Mangin of AC Milan, highly rated, didn't really get a chance when he was at PSG, but is doing a good job at AC Milan. Those are the two I came up with. For me, I'd rather keep David De Gea. I'm a massive, massive, Bazuna is a decent young keeper at, um, at Southampton. He is Irish. I'm not really sure he's good enough, good enough quality. Definitely as a backup, um, but if you're looking to replace David De Gea, it's got to be someone world class because David De Gea this season has been world and last season world class so 
you know, if, I would sell about 10 players over David De Gea. <laughs> and I would, we need about five, we need two strikers. We've only got one right back. We need another midfielder. We possibly need another winger and, and, and a centre back. And we're talking about David Ea. The mind boggles. But look, we move on, Nick. With the club being up for sale, it definitely is up for sale. We can say partial investment up for sale. And Ronaldo leaving. January transfer window is right around the corner. Do you think we're going to bring anyone in, especially a striker? I'd like to say yes, but I don't think we will. I think that Ten Hag will see the season out and look for somebody in the summer. I think that whoever, if we were going to get somebody in January, it would be a rush buy. I think because we're panicking over the fact that we've not we've not got our striker now because Ronaldo's gone. I'd like to think that this was not necessarily a plan because that sounds really calculated, but that Ten Hag already knew that he wasn't necessarily going to fit the system and actually the stuff that's happened behind the scenes. I don't think that's the case, though. I think that we will we'll see out the season. We've, we've done well without Ronaldo. I don't think he's necessarily been pivotal to, to our play. So I think that Ten Hag might just ride his luck to the end of the season and actually start doing some of the, the groundwork now, if he hasn't already. I mean, maybe he's another you know, shy and silent type, but I think we'd we'd have heard more. I don't think we're going to go in for anybody in in the January transfer window. I think it's going to be a summer one, if I'm being honest, because there'll be players that are coming to end of contracts. They've only got a year left rather than midway midway through the season. So, no, I don't think we will. I think we desperately need a striker. That's when we were talking about goalkeepers. I'm thinking, we need a striker. We don't need a goalkeeper. We need a striker. Oh. So, well, yeah, we do, but... Ideally, we just need one for now, um, because we haven't got we haven't got that in the squad at all. I mean, I know, you know people are talking about other players that could be strike. They're not out and out strikers. I want an out and out striker. And VS asked in the members only. Shout out to Victoria Secrets. Is it better to sign a striker on loan? just as a stopgap and then go all out for the target in the summer as opposed to bringing in like that someone who isn't really a number nine and we're bringing him in because we don't have anyone and then making a mistake and wasting the money. Potentially. Again, you've got to think about... Oh, she's gone. She'll be back in. I can see gap go. I think, guys, I, I, I think if we're going to sign someone, it'll be gap go. Um, he'll be the person that we're going to, that we will go for. But I agree with, with VS. I do like Gapko, but I, I, I'm on the same lines as Nick. I want an out and out number nine. We need two of them. We need two strikers. I think Ten Hag is probably going to just go for a forward. Um, Sorry, Nick. I don't know um, where I went. I've, 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 just, that's the main thing. Like, yeah, just, sorry, I'm just thinking about some of the, the forwards that we've already got. If we're talking about young, you know, young players... And we'll talk about youth. You know, we've got Garnacho. Why are we not utilising him a little bit more? We've got Alanga. I know he's not he's not been fantastic, but why are we not utilising some of the players that we've already got? Why do we need to get a loan for that if we've already got those players that are in the squad and that are used to playing within the team in, in some form or another? So I... Who would we get on loan that we haven't already got and potentially could use? Igalo. <laughs> no. no. Jamie Vardy. Oh, don't want him. He's old. Honestly. He's old. Why are we we're just replacing old for old? I, I think know, that's what we're like an insurance policy old for new. I want new people. I want Claire Claire makes says a good one to pay, who's probably free, but maybe we made a mistake. But by going back with Ronaldo, yes, we did, we did, and I think sometimes you have to look forward and not back and accept that things didn't work out and you move on from them. Um, again, we, we've got some really good hungry youth players. I'd utilise those with some of the with some of the the older players. Um, Martial, with you know, we've still got him, although he's not been fantastic and he's not necessarily match fit we've we've got potential within our squad and i think that if 
Ten Hag utilises them correctly. I don't think there's a need necessarily to to get a loan for January or buy somebody in January, but I do believe that we need somebody for for the summer. Absolutely. I think if we don't get a striker in January or forwards, I don't think we're going to get top four because we we can't rely on Martial and then we literally we're going to have Rashford in there make do. So I, I think we definitely four anyway, Mary. I really, yeah. I mean, we, we we we're doing well, but I still don't. I still think that top four is out of our reach, not necessarily because of of the play that we've got. I think just because that we're we're still in uncertain territory. We've had lots of upset. Ronaldo going, that's upsetting the apple cart a little bit. It's going to be better now he's gone, but there's still all that drama and stuff attached to it. So I wasn't, I was hoping for top four, but I'm not going to be particularly disappointed if we don't get it. If we're if we're making progress and the progress within the team, within them them playing together, the way they communicate, it's not just about on the pitch for me. It's about off the pitch as well. Yeah, I, I didn't have any expectations or like putting pressure on Ten Hag. I had said that I don't want toxicity. I want the manager to be in charge. I want the, you know, the problematic player is gone. I want to see a style of playing. We are starting to see all that. But the, 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 the shit start of the season by Liverpool, Tottenham, I mean, have been dreadful. Chelsea all over the place, they sacked the manager. We will never have a better chance of getting top four. The only one who seem a little bit like they're going to give us a, a thing is Newcastle, and I'm waiting for them to drop off. So I think if we sign a striker, third is there for, for grabs. Miles off the top two thirds, mm. but it's there. The top four is definitely there. Look, if we don't get it, we don't get it. But we never had a better better chance because some of those teams will be stronger next season. They will. Yeah. Um, and we got to take the opportunity. But if we don't sign a striker, we're not going to get... We're, we definitely won't get top four. I could see... Someone said it earlier on, Joe Felix. No, Joe Felix is not a number nine. But he can play in a variety of positions across the front. And I think no Ten Hag is going, he'll, he'll take that. It makes shift. he's played Rashford there. He's played a couple of other players there. We, we've seen Bruno in a false nine, Ericsson in a false nine. I think because the club is, if the club, if we had money, I think we'd go for Gapko. The fact that we don't, I think we'll take we'll get Joe Felix on loan. That's what I think will happen. A loan for Joe Felix. He wants out. They're not going to get the money that's they they're asking for a hundred million plus. He's flopped. You're not getting that for a flop. I think we'll get him on a loan with an option or an obligation to buy at the end of the season or someone like that, like a Vardy, like a Depay, someone free on loan, something like that. I was leaning more towards Gapco, 50 million. I'm not sure we cough up the 50 million pounds. Um, but it'll be interesting. We move on because speaking of the youth, Nick, there's we've only seen the Brazilian lads come back today to training and it probably the Portuguese lads as well because they both got, got knocked out. Um, in the same round, obviously, Varane Martinez, there are a couple of other players who still aren't there. Are we going to see some U team players start and in the squad for this game against Burnley? I think we have to, um, if I'm being honest. I, I suppose the, the games that we played with the youth <laughs> weren't exactly fantastic. But again... It's about, I think for Ten Hag, it was about looking at where the potential was within those players. And there was quite a few that had a good enough game to be able to fill in while some of those other players actually take a bit of a, a backseat. If I'm honest, I don't think we will see any youth because I think that Ten Hag's wanna go, wanna, going to want to go straight into the, the team that he wants that because that is more important getting them playing back together again after the break so I don't think we'll necessarily see many youth players but I think we might see one or two not that I think that they'll start maybe the only one that will start is Darren Acho, potentially but other than that I think the others might come on as as subs depend on how the game how the game's going I, I mean again it's Burnley <laughs> I know they're doing well in the championship, but 
championship level, you would hope that he would go out with a strong squad to make sure, because there's nothing worse than going into a game thinking, you know, we're, we're going to smash them because they're only championship level and getting absolutely slaughtered by them with substandard players, let's say. You have to have enough in your squad to say this is this is good enough. And that was evident from, from the two friendlies that we played is that we used two men and we didn't have enough of our starting our proper starting 11 because they were at the World Cup. So I think that's kind of solidified it for Ten Hag as well, that he needs to just have maybe one or two youth in the squad and not too many. A whole load of them, yeah. Um, I I think some of them will be on the bench simply because we, I mean, we won't have any choice. Um, but I can only probably see one like that. Garnacho starting is probably the only one. Are we still considering Alanga a youth team player or is he like now a first team squad player? I think he could potentially start as well. Um, but I, I think he's the first teamer since last season. So for me, he doesn't count. Garnacho definitely should start and I think he will. I'd love to see Iqbal, but I can't see it, to be honest, because Ericsson didn't qualify from the group and McTominay didn't go. So I, I think, you know, we'll see them. Maybe someone in the number 10 position might be where um, we might see a, a U-team player, but I think some of them will be on the bench. Definitely at centre-back. I think we we probably... I, Ted and Mengi got injured. I don't know else, who else is available I don't know what the story is with, with Twan Zay because he seems to have fucking vanished. So he's gone on road somewhere. So we don't know. <laughs> fucking hell. So the centre back position will be very interesting. Is he going to pluck someone from the U team? I don't know. Is Will Fish still there? Did he go on loan? I think he might have went on loan. Um, God knows, it could be McTominay if if Maguire or, or uh, Lindelof gets injured at the back. Um, but. You know, we might see Gerardo, who I think played. I think he he was in the squad for for the two um, Spanish games. So Brandon Williams as well probably will be involved. Um, so we'll wait and see. But Nick, what are we expecting from Burnley? They've only lost two away games all season. Burnley, top of the championship, flying one defeat and six one one yeah one defeat and six five wins. I think it's going to be a tough game, if I'm honest. I don't think they're going to be they're, they're going to want to get something from us. They're, they're going to need to get something from us. It's as simple as that. So I think they're going to press hard. Again, I've not watched them very much recently, um, but I think that that's where we're weak when we're pressed. Really, you know, we like the we like the counter attack. So it's wrong to say that we're necessarily weak there, but the pressure, the pressure on our on our centre backs, that's where they're going to go for because I think we're still weak at that centre back position because we're still trying to see who's playing and actually if we play some players that are, are notorious, then they're gonna they're gonna go straight for that. Again, I think we'll need to watch down the wings as well because I don't think we've necessarily got that proper. The, the wing position sorted as yet. I don't think we've got enough pace there, especially if we play the likes of, of Shaw. I don't think he's got enough pace now. And the fact that he's been at the World Cup as well um, will be difficult. So I'm, I'm expecting it to be a bit of a shit show. Um, and I think we might just scrape it, but we're, we're going to have to come out to win it. There's no doubt about it. You've seen England came out against against France we can't come out like that we have to come out we have to believe in ourselves we've we've played really well up until this point and we need to keep that faith and that passion it'll just be a case of who are the players that he chooses to do that who's gonna who's gonna be hungry for it uh and luckily we've only got three for three players that were at the world cup with england because <laughs> oh, we don't really, we won't come out like that but claire said it is going it could be a banana skin i am more i know it's burnt guys it's burnley but they are flying they're not the burnley that they were vincent company has them playing actual football they were football inside one defeat in six they are miles ahead in the and the championship I know we know it's the championship, but we've struggled with, with teams yeah. who've come up from the championship in their first season, newly promoted teams, constantly for the last couple of years. Um, 
you know, I we think, see... I think Burnley aren't championship level though. That I think that's where the difference is. That's why they're doing well. They were never championship level. They weren't quite Premier League level, and I think that there almost needs to be that bit in between because <laughs> they're just they're not they're not championship level. I think they're better than that. And I, and I think they'll show it yeah. on Wednesday night. They're going to come out of the traps. They yeah. are going to. I'm telling you, they're going. They're, I think we're going to get run ragged in this game. I do. Their their fitness and our fitness. I mean, I know we've played behind closed doors against a couple of teams. We had the two games in in Spain. They're going to run us ragged. They've been playing regularly and consistently. They have the mindset too of you know club football, whereas our players have been all over the place because of the Winter World Cup. I think this is going to be a very very tough game, and they. They're going to come, they're going to be up for it, they're going to be in our faces, rearing to go from the first whistle. They won't be afraid and they're looking for a scalp as well. What better scalp than winning, Man United, winning against United at Old Trafford? Um, so I am worried about them. They are a good attacking team. You're looking at their players and the, you know they've still got some of the players that they had when they were in the Premier League. But um, I haven't watched, I don't, I don't watch the championship guys at all. Get, fuck off. Give me a break. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they do on Wednesday night. But Nick predicted 11. It's very hard because yeah. is it going to go like VS said it earlier on. Like, why do the players from the Premier League are, who are at the World Cup need a rest? Because their their schedule seemed like it was just Premier Leagues. But I think mm. all the flying and the heat and, and, and all of that factors in um, and being at an international tournament. So will we see the, the Brazilian lads and the Portuguese lads come in because they are back training and they are technically fit and because they've been playing. So who do you think he's going to go with in this one? I think he's gonna be De Gea. I think he'll. I think he'll use his strength in his squad. And if players are fit, regardless of whether they've been at the World Cup, I think he'll. I think he'll play them. So I think it'll be Dallo. I don't. I don't think that he'll play Varane. Um, I don't think that Varane is is going to be fit. So I think it's going to be Maguire and Martinez, Malasia, Antony. No, Eric Ericsson, McTominay, Anthony Fernandez, Rashford, and then Garnacho up front. I think he's going to be the only the only youth one in it. You think he's going to play like a full strength team? Yeah, I do. He can't afford not to. If if those players are fit and the back and the training, he has to play a full strength squad. For me, he needs to be winning every game now. He needs to keep us in it. So. I really do think that he's going to play a full... I'll, I'll be happily surprised... He's, if he he's in the victory parade with Argentina. He's still in Argentina. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone from the final will play. Definitely not. Well, he wasn't um, playing the bloody final. Well, <laughs> he's, 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 he's he's neither was Sergio one. Aguero and it seemed like he scored the fucking winning well, penalty. We're paying for bloody wages. He needs to get his ass back here and he needs to start playing for us. Maybe not Martinez then, maybe. Um, Lindelof. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be Lindelof and Maguire. I, I think it'll be Lindelof and Maguire. I'm not sure. I'm going to say De Gea, Dalo. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was Aaron Wambasaka. I, I won't say Aaron Wambasaka just because the manager doesn't rate him at all. De Gea, yeah. Dalo, Lindelof, Maguire and Malassia. I think he'll give Shaw a rest. Malassia didn't play at all at the World Cup, even though he went to Holland. I think it'll be Eriksen, McTominay and Bruno. I think he will play Bruno. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Donny. I wouldn't just because Bruno played in every single game for Portugal. Um, Donny came off, I think, did he miss one of the games or he came off injured? I'm not sure about his fitness, so I don't know. Um and he did play in all those games prior to the World Cup. And maybe he's thinking of keeping him fresh for the Forest game rather than the game against. Yeah. Um, so I'll revise that actually. I think it'll be uh, Donny and not Bruno. So I say the midfield three will be Ericsson, McTominay and Donny van der Beek. A bit dodgy, but look, I think on the right wing, 
I'll go with Anthony because he didn't feature much at the World Cup. I think left wing will be Garnacho and it'll be Martial up front. That's what I think he'll go with. Martial is fit. He didn't go to the World Cup. Um, no. The score prediction, Nick. Get in the live chat with your score predictions as well, guys. Now, Burnley only lost two away games all season. One two days ago, 3-1. One, one defeat and five wins in the last six for Burnley. We haven't played since 13th of November. Nick, what do you think the score will be? I think we're still going to beat them. I think it's going to be 2-1. I think that they'll give us a good game, but we're still Manchester United and they're still Burnley. So I think that we will. I actually do think that we'll go behind. Um, where's the surprise there? <laughs> I do think that we'll go 1-0 down. And it will be in the first half. We go one nil down, but I, th I think we'll come back from it. Um, and I love those comeback goals. Absolutely love them. They just Old Trafford is rocking when that happens. So yeah, two one win. Guys, get your score predictions in the live chat. The she thinks four nil Man United. I I think Burnley are going to win. I, I agree with Claire. I think it's going to be 2-1 to Burnley. I'm sorry, guys. I do. I think the fact that they're flying, they're, they, they've been playing regularly and we're all over the place from the World Cup schedule and on our team, it won't be as strong as we think it will be. I think it'll be the Premier League game on the 27th. That will be the strongest one. Um, Ten Hag has hinted he will use the wider squad as well and, and give some of them a break. And our wider squad is... They're not that good. So I'm going to say 2-1 Burnley. Um, Burnley will sit back, says music. Mm, I don't know. They're not the Burnley of old. 3-1 United, says Tiff. Um, two months without a SIG. Can you shout me out? Shout out to Gaz, who's in the pub watching us, you legend. 4-0 uh, United. 3-1 United, says Mary Long. 2-1, I hope, says Jailing to United. 2-0 United, says Gaz. 2-1, I think. I think Paul said 2-1 United as well. 1-0 um, to United, a, a quiet game. 2-0, says Starlord. You missed me. I know you fucking missed negative Nelly Mary. Um, I need something to rhyme. If we don't score more than one, it's going definitely going to go to penalties. Oh my God. It could be another late one. James says 2 nil United. 3 1 United says Gary. A lot of you guys optimistic. Maybe I maybe I should take some of your positivity, but I'm going to keep it all the way real. Um, hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully it, it's your guys' score, Nick's score. Guys, before we go, shout out to everyone, you legends, for coming. We're back. We're back, baby. Back in business. Um, Nick, where can they go and follow you? Not a Nick JB United. Uh, man, man you, Nick, on Twitter. Man you, why are you? Or why yes. oh, oh, why are you? Why are you? Yes. Man, you, Nick, go follow Nick because her other account got suspended. So go follow Nick. Follow us at She Devils United. My first video on this channel. Shout out to you. Hope you've subscribed. If you're watching the replay, guys, like and subscribe. Get in and let us know what you think the score will be and who you think will play in the team because it'll be interesting to see the starting 11. I'll be back tomorrow, guys. I prob it'll probably be a pre-record. I'm not sure yet. And of course, we'll be live straight after the game. Hopefully, it won't go to extra time and pens because it could be 12 o'clock by the time I fucking get on and do the match reaction. <laughs> guys, have a smash and choose. All that's left to say shout out to Nick for coming on, spending Monday on She Devils. Take care, all. Bye, folks. Bye.